hi and welcome back to part two of my larkspur flower oh if you joined me last week uh, you'll notice that i started this project um, on a i kept calling these a five by seven but i think these are a four by six or anyways so this is done on a canvas board and i went ahead and made them all black for the background and then I went back in and knocked out the color um, with white in order to make everything pop. Now this one I probably did not need to knock so much of the background out but I already had them pre-knocked out or pre-painted. So um, again I apologize. Uh, Tammy um, is here, me, <laughs> the artist. It's been one of those days y'all. Uh, with TMH Art Studio and Dream Big Classes. And Wednesdays, I'm trying to dedicate to new paintings. Um, so I start fresh with a new painting and work until it's done. I also have Wrap Up Thursday, where I take old paintings that I have put to the side for whatever reason. And now I'm, my goal is this year to get them all completed. So we're going to just jump right in here and start painting on um, this flower here. And again, I'm going to be using my black as uh, a lot for my shadow and try to work with it and not against it. Um, also, what's kind of cool is that um, by doing that, it, it gives a different effect. So of course, if this was on um, a white background these flowers would really be popping and I kind of wanted to do something a little bit different so this is a challenge this challenges me to paint um, outside of the box with a darker background so all I'm doing is going in I'm looking at my reference photo to um, work with where my highlights are and my shadows. So when you're working from a reference, unless you're doing photorealism, it's hard. Well, it's not hard. I keep saying it's hard. Um, you want to do your um, your best to get it as accurate as you want if you're not looking for photorealism. And that's not what I'm doing here. I am painting that I enjoy um, painting flowers but I also enjoy painting and hopefully um, in the next few um, videos down the road I will be actually doing more in color pencil which I used to do a lot of and now I'm, I'm starting to miss it only because I've been doing so much acrylic lately so with this one again I'm just following my petals on my reference photo, making sure I get my dark areas in and my highlights in. And the reason you want to focus on that when you're painting is to make sure your elements in those sections are popping where it needs to or gets pulled back so you're creating your foreground, your middle ground, and your background. So over the next hour, like I said, my goal is to finish this, um, this one up to start the next one. Now the only thing that uh, will be last for me to do when I do get this done, um, which I'll probably show not on film um, is putting my bumblebees in so again all I'm doing is working and blending and again like I said following my reference photo Now 
And again, these I did for fun. Eventually these will be gifts because I'm doing um, each flower of the month. So I will be getting these made into postcards to um, send to friends and family who have birthdays in the month of the flower. And then eventually the person or what someone will get the the originals if they're interested um, of the painting. And again, too, if you're looking for gifts for friends and family, these are quick and simple. If you don't want to get into too much detail, and you can make them um, into washes or make them as detailed as you want if you give yourself enough time. And um, like I said, they make great gifts when they're small and compact so you're not stressing over doing a very large piece. And again, I'm just following my shapes. And if you're afraid to that you can't get it exactly, especially if you're a beginner, get as close as you can. But also remember too, no one is going to compare your piece next to the photo because they're never going to see the photo next to your painting. So always keep that in mind that if the petal doesn't ex look exactly like the petal on the reference, that's okay because no one's going to know except you. And even if you confess and say, well, this isn't perfect or this, this, and this, which trust me in the past I have many times and I was always reminded what I just told you is no one's going to have the actual piece next to um, your art. And again, unless you're looking for photorealism, this will take you much longer than um, what I'm gonna be doing here within the hour. So I'm just working, like I said, back and forth, seeing what my reference is showing me. And at times, if you feel overwhelmed, break it down even smaller. section off the, the drawing and have just a little open box um, that you cut out in a on a piece of paper so that you're only seeing part of the, the flower you're working on so you're not overwhelmed by the other um, petals. So do what works for you that'll that'll make you not feel overwhelmed by everything because this can get overwhelming if you are new to it. Sometimes it can overwhelm me and it just depends upon how my day is going. That's something that shouldn't be overwhelming me um, starts to overwhelm. And that's where you just take a deep breath and say, okay, where do I want to start? And then before you know it, you're moving right along and you don't feel overwhelmed anymore. You're caught up in what you're working on. 
without realizing how far you came from when you were just telling yourself that you're just overwhelmed by it. So I'm using my black background as part of my shadow and I'm just going in with my darkest blue and, and working with it. So this way there's no black being added to this at all. This is whatever you see in black or what looks like black. It's just me using the black the canvas part where I painted um, as part of the art. And if I do have to use black, it's just um, mainly because I over took the, what, the black that's laid down here and just um, put too much paint on it to use it anymore. And there's nothing wrong with it, but my objective is to not use any black. Again, you're just going to keep building and working on this until it is done. And again, I'm just looking. First, I'm trying to find my pedal. <laughs> There's a lot going on here. So I'm just trying to find what pedal I use to make sure I'm laying down. the colors um, as close as possible to my reference and again I'm not using a very large brush because I'm not working on a very large piece of canvas but saying that I also don't always use a large brush when I'm painting on even big canvases and again personal preference what feels good in your hand is what you want to paint with some days I'll pick up my favorite brush and it's just not working it doesn't feel right in my hand so I'll pick up a different brush until I find that one that actually is coming together for me. And I do go in and clean my brush off every so often because I just get too much paint on it and it's hard to control where you're putting the paint when you have one too much on your paintbrush and you can't really see your tip anymore and just keep working it so again I won't be putting any of the veins in it that um, that are in the petals. I might indicate some lines here and there, but um, that's not my objective with these, um, this selection of flowers that I'm doing. So again, you just keep building and working again the photo that you select if you find you're doing this flowers 
section it off so you're not getting lost on what where your petals are at or which ones you're working on um, it'll make things a little bit easier when you go back into to start painting them because it that part can get a little overwhelming when you're when you kind of get lost at which flower or petal you were working on. I guess all these little sections are flowers with multiple, of course, multiple petals everywhere. So again, I'm just using latex or Liquitex, sorry, um, paint. I'm using um, my primary blue and phthalo blue and white are basically my only colors that I'm using on this section and working with um, the black. Now as I am painting this I am seeing a little bit of red in here which I may come back in and add some red yeah, I'm seeing some red in this blue. It's not much, but it's enough to, um, actually, let me go ahead and just grab a little bit of red to the palette. It's not going to be much and this for sure a little is going to go a long way like I said I see some red but it's not much going on I'm not exactly sure what's around it or if it's part of the the bloom but I'm just going to go in and add A little bit here and there and that's the one thing too when you um, start painting you may think you've really looked at the subject until you really start getting more into it and then you realize that there's a little bit more activity going on So the red is just a hint here and there. So again, I'm not using black. This is a this is the phthalo. I'm using it for the shadow parts. And just keep building and building, looking at your reference. Thank you. 
So I'm going back in with just a little bit of white to add some highlights to some of the tips um, and around a little bit because the flowers as they seem to go outward definitely do lighten up. Again, I'm not trying to set a record on finishing this up within the hour. I'm coming in and just enjoying myself and my day with um, painting. So work at your own pace. So instead of pre-mixing like like I said, I don't always do like what everybody else is doing. I'm not pre-mixing my colors on my palette. I'm putting enough paint down that I'm coming back on my canvas here and blending my colors here. And again, there's um, no right or wrong way in doing this. Everybody paints a little bit different. I just feel that I can get a better feel on the flow of my paint while I'm putting it on my canvas than trying to mix it. I mean, there's nothing wrong with pre-mixing the color, but sometimes you um, put all that color down or mixed it all and it's still not right because when you put it up against what you're working on, you notice that You still have to do more blending and mixing and you've wasted a lot of paint when why not just find that mixture on your canvas and just work with it here now this portion right here I just added a little bit of red to it to give it a little bit of a different texture and color and just keep working it until you get exactly what you want and how you want it. And it might be too, once you lay it down, you'll have to just go back into it and add more color once it dries a little bit. And that's nothing wrong with that. Again, everybody works a little bit different. I like, I like to work while it's still wet for the wet on wet effect, but then down the road, on some areas in order to get the look I want I do need to let it dry to pull off the other look so if any of you are painting this along with me or have already painted one of these, I'd love to see them. Like I always say, um, we need to be um, each other's support system, cheerleader. We also don't want to come on here real angry or leaving um, horrible comments like this to be something positive that we're able to find a place where we don't mind watching other people paint while we're painting or um, it's like watching Bob Ross I don't always sit and paint when he's doing a painting but I love watching him paint 
just his technique and how he pulls everything together. Now granted, he's he was or did do that um, for many, many years. So he became um, quite good at what he did. And hopefully one day I can say the same for me. My goal, once I start getting comfortable with my paints again, um, I have been away for a while and this last month or so I've made myself get back into it, the reason why I'm out here, or one of the reasons, and it has helped a lot. Even if I don't have an audience, there's someone out there eventually will be watching and even if I just have one person, just one person following along or picking up a technique that I've done, that right there has just made my day. So even though I'd love to be out there for everybody and one day um, y'all can't wait to see what I'm gonna do next or be a part of it, I'm very humble just to be out here showing what I am able to do now because it is a humbling experience to come out here and paint when sometimes you're a little iffy like um, am I going to make a fool of myself? Can I actually pull this off? And also to show that when I do make mistakes which you know in art they say there's no mistake just happy accidents um, that I can show you that, okay, that didn't turn out correct, um, but here's how we're gonna fix it. Here's how to fix it and still have a good piece that you're proud of. And again, I just keep checking my reference Sometimes when I faint, I paint. <laughs> okay, my words are coming out weird today. Anyways, whenever I paint, when I'm painting, let's try this again. When I am painting, sometimes I feel more like I'm drawing and I'm not painting. It's like this is my pencil, because um, that's how I started with charcoal drawings. So that's basically what I do here. I just draw my shape until I get it exactly like it's supposed to. hard for me and still sort of is, is to just do it. Just give it to God and do it. I'm not going to have all the answers or I'm not going to be the next um, master artist in some way, shape or form. But I'm doing something I enjoy doing and love doing. Even though some days, ugh, I just can't get what it is I want to pull across or make happen. And no matter if I'm not in the mood, I make myself do it because I notice when when you stop, when you stop expressing yourself through your art, it's hard to um, pick it back up more so which is what I've been struggling over the last couple of weeks but I made myself sit down I mean 
I wanted to do more during the week in the painting part and I did um, not do what I my objective was but I made sure I did my Wednesday and Thursday um, I did have a couple people that was on a negative format um, steal my joy and I allowed it so I've been trying to get my joy back and it has not been easy but saying that I made sure I sat down and painted even though I wasn't in the mood I made sure that I did not get up from my desk until I did something. Now, uh, it wasn't easy, but I can't let the negativity of what was said to me take my joy away, which, I mean, it did. It, they did take it away. Um, but I'm, I couldn't, I can't let them defeat me. Um, and being an artist, we try not to take things personally. We, at least my goal is not to get caught up in the negativity when other people are having a bad day to bring them down into, you know, or to be a part of theirs and let myself get caught up in it. But when it becomes direct attacks to my teaching or how I do things, it, it, you, you, it's so hard not to get hurt by it. And I try not to, I try to ignore it, but it did, um, affect me a little bit more than I thought it did so that's why I told myself to keep painting so if you're in that same struggle where someone has commented on your art or you as a person take a step back and see what it is that they're trying to get from you what it is why are they making you feel bad about who you are and what you're doing or trying to accomplish and a lot of times it's them and not you especially when you're out there trying to create and help others in art in anything you're doing it for the right reasons and maybe they're jealous because all of a sudden they don't have your undivided attention like they used to. And you're you're moving forward and they're still standing still. But don't let them hold you back. I, I struggled for a couple of weeks where I was about to walk away from all of this because it's just, it's not worth it. It's not worth feeling horrible as a human being by what others say when you're thinking you're doing your best and it's, you wonder, is this all worth it? Is it, am I, am I following the, the correct, the right path? And do I want to put up with all of this? And even though you do and work past it and the person knows that or can't understand why they're you're mad at them you don't want to say well this is why because then you're going to be mean and, and everything and I did try to explain where I was coming from um, but I realized at the end of the day I was allowing them to affect me in other ways in my personality and in, in my just my happiness and I decided you know I'm not gonna let them control my thoughts my heart my head anymore and just 
let it go so I voiced my opinions my thought to the person and then I told myself make changes make it happen and that's why I'm still here doing this because I chose not to let them to defeat me and I've gone other avenues to try and bring in students and pro you know future projects so basically don't give up on yourself I know there are others out there that are way better than me but then like I said before I am not comparing myself or trying to compete to be better than them all I can do is be better than myself just keep doing what I'm doing enjoying it and just be the best you can be and with art like anything else you just have to paint every day if you can paint more often or draw more often than you already do and I don't always want to paint like everybody else I mean there's some awesome awesome artist out there but I know that eventually I'll be right there with them or I am right there with them on certain things but I'm not trying to run a race here. I'm just working at becoming a better person in life and in my art. So again, keep following your shadows, the highlights, let it dry, come back to it if you need to. Just keep building and working and moving around your canvas so I'm using my shadows that I already placed there to add my darker paint the phthalo then I'm going in with some primary blue pull it out a little bit then I'm gonna get some of my white and start working in towards the edges which have more blue in it I mean they have blue in it um, sorry I got focused on what I was doing um, the white mixing in helps with the, the sh with the highlights. Sometimes you have to put the white on the outside of, of the area that you have not touched yet. Uh, if you go, sometimes if you go into it too soon, you're not going to get the blending that you want. You can get it kind of muddy. just easier to do the opposite so I'm starting on the outside here and working my way inward with my white and 
then going back in and pulling up the dark into the light area. I went down too far, so I have to go back in and add some of the dark back in. And again, just keep building and working on it. As they say, it's slow and steady wins the race. So the last time I worked on this, which was uh, the last Tuesday or Wednesday, I went in and knocked out um, everything with white. That's where I also went in and um, put it where it was more white for more of my highlights that I knew were going in there and put less white where my shadows are so when I go in with my darker blue I'm working with the black on the palette and not against it and then when I go in to pull in for my highlights I already have a good brightness to it because of where I put the white more white on it so I can easily if I wanted to use the white that I already have down as part of the painting where you don't have to go and put more um, white so all I'm doing is just building and building here I have paint I had paint on both sides of my brushes. Both sides of my <laughs> I only have one brush. On the both side of the brush, but when you're working on one side of your brush, you're not touching the other side. So when I need a little bit of more white, I just roll my brush to add some white down to work with it. So always remember if you load your brush up to work both sides of your brush. just coming back in with the water brush to kind of blend in what I have down so this one here because this petals on top where this one's underneath I need to go in and add a little bit more of the shadow underneath show that it's separate from the one below but it almost looks like now it's part of my top flower not underneath this is where you're going to come back in with the white to kind of just um, highlight that petal and what happened which this is a, another reason um, to show you too um, it's not a mistake, but it's just something that I just created without realizing it. I made this into one big petal and it's supposed to have been two petals. So I'm just now gonna break them up just a little bit to show that there's a second petal underneath. So 
So again, there's no mistakes when you're painting. You just go back in, wait till it dries a little bit to fix it. Or you create um, a new one over top of it. That's what's great about acrylic. You can go back in and make changes so easily. canvas. Now I do have center pieces I have to put in. I'm going to do that at the very end. And then my bumblebee, which like I said, I'll probably show that off camera when I'm done. I have to figure out where my placement is going to be and everything. So just keep looking at the shapes, building your flowers, and have fun with it. If you're making this for a friend or a family member, kind of think about them as you're painting it, the joy that they're going to see when you hand this to them. a few new students on my Friday adult class that didn't think they can do anything end up creating some really pretty paintings and gave them away as gifts and they could not get over the compliments they got from, from people loving it So don't sell yourself short when you're painting or pulling things together. They thought they did an okay job and got rewarded in the end by people just praising them. Again, I'm just going in and I know some of the areas are light or dry now, so I'm just having some of the highlights in to help break up the petals a little bit. And again, like I said, you can also take this And um, put the, put the, all the white down. I mean, go in it hard with the white. And you can always come back later and just put a wash in. Instead of painting it to this point. I mean, you could paint it to this point kind of a thing. But it'd be kind of cool to see what a, a pure wash would be on top of the, the white. You'd still get the same effect in ways, but a different, definitely a different look. So you just keep moving and moving as we move along our canvas. So 
so again I'm just putting down my shadows in areas first this way I can keep it nice and dark by using the black And if you find you do want to use black in it, um, there's no wrong, nothing wrong with that. Just make sure you, that you're putting the, the shadow where you need to with the black. I think in some places this might pop a little bit more if I go back in with black. But again, I'm trying to use my darker blue or my black. And if I have to, since I do have my red out in my on my palette, you can almost go in and add some red to it too, and it'll give it a little bit more depth. So that's what I'm going to try here. I'm going to add some red. And it does deepen it a little bit. I just don't want to make it too purplish. But like in here, I can almost use some right over in here to make it a little bit deeper in color. And then add a little bit more blue. If you can avoid using black, again, we already have it on our, on our background here. Um, Go for it. I mean, sometimes your shadow isn't always black. It's the color that's um, being cast over top. Like this is; these are all blue, so the shadow still may be blue underneath, a darker blue, but not necessarily black. So I do like that, going back in a little bit here and there with the red. It kind of gives it a, a lot more depth to it. See, happy accident. I wasn't planning on doing that, but because I put the red out for some of my petals, I am going back in. Now the other thing you have to be careful is that when you go to lighten it up, you don't pull too much of the red out into your petal if there's not any there to pull out. So you do want to be careful, especially when you start adding the white to it. So just be aware of that. And just keep building and building. I think this right here that I just did is part of the stem that comes out from behind um, of the petal, you know, those center pieces. I think that's what's throwing me off right there when I come back and look at it, which means I got, I have to treat this just a little bit different.
to push it more towards the back. So I'm probably going to go ahead and put this, this one in. So we just keep building and building. So this one may go over just a little bit of an hour um, because I do believe I can get this one done today in the sense of the flowers I still need to go and put the centerpiece in like I said and the, the bumblebee But I probably will not film the bumblebee being painted. Now, later on down the road, if y'all want to see me paint the bumblebee, let me know. And again, if you all are painting anything, please share. Let me see what y'all are working on. It's kind of nice to give others, you know, give your feedback and positive information on, hey, that looks great. I've been wanting to do something like that. So again, we just keep working and building. I should just paint right over top of this which I'm going to. I don't know why I kept trying to save it. I don't want to paint around it. I can just paint right over top of it and then come back in and add that stem. So again, uh, you guys can easily follow along with me, or you can fast forward to the section you want to see. This is just me hanging out, painting with you guys, or I even thought about fast forwarding these so that you could see the finished piece. I might do that down the road, but in case anybody who wants to paint along with me, there's that option too. Again, I'm not trying to set world records here. I'm just here to have fun painting. Again, like I said, hopefully down the road will be something I'm working on that you'll find interesting. So again, I'm just using, I grabbed some white and I'm using the, the paint I already laid down to do the blending. Just keep working it and working it. And you don't have to keep, you don't have to blend it completely. If you want to show some pink strokes, then 
don't blend completely. Go in, touch a little bit here and there to leave the paint behind of your brush stroke and don't blend it. Sometimes I like that effect too. It gives you, it shows the brushes, um, the brush stroke um, to show that this was painted in I think the paint brush strokes gives it a little bit more interest and have it all the time completely smooth. Now I'm sure when you get up close and personal with the ones that are really blended, you may not always see the, the paint um, brush strokes if that's what they're trying to achieve, but I kind of like them. painting I want my darkness to come outward so I'm going back to the center and pulling outward or if I want the lightness to show then you're going to do it the opposite direction so let's say I want to get some white here I'm going to put some white here I'm not going to go inward and outward because I'll pull some of that blue so I'm going to go in the opposite direction so I have a little bit more pure white going in So watch the flow of the direction of your brush when you're going into wet paint. That if you want that particular color, you're going to pull it in that direction. But if you don't want that color, you're gonna go in the opposite direction. You're gonna pull inward instead of in. Yeah, you're gonna pull inward. This would be outward. So again, you just keep building and building. And you have a few more flowers to do. that I've already pre-started in the sense of they already have the white down. Um, so I may just pick those up and refer you guys back to this one on how I got the white. Or I might take them to the Thursday wrap up. Since it's something I have already started and just didn't finish them. We'll play that all by ear. So please hit like if you guys are liking what I'm doing. I know it's um, everybody's gonna not like or like, I'm okay. But I would love if you like it and subscribe because I promise there will be more exciting pieces coming along and not always in acrylic. I 
I just have some pieces that I have I have started and I'm trying to wrap everything up so that when I do start a new piece I have nothing hovering over me saying hey you forgot about me you didn't take care of me um, I do want to have finished my paintings finished and I do have a reason for all of that um, other than also wanting them done but um, I don't want to leave this world with unfinished work especially in my art so my goal is to finish finish those up I just I know we all leave things behind that we never completed might it be a book we never finished reading or that novel that you never finished writing the garden that you wanted to plant and never got done I don't want to I really don't want to leave any art behind and every someone coming up going oh that would have been pretty if she finished it or I'd love to have seen that finished it would just make me feel better and that's personal for preference too I'm just going in here and there even though I still have a few areas here I need to finish up so I'm kind of bouncing around now again work at your own pace there is we're not in a race. At least I'm not in a race. I'm doing this to enjoy my painting and what I'm working on, and hopefully you're enjoying it. Again, all I'm doing is going in. I'm hitting my highlights, my medium lights, or the low lights, my shadows. When you focus on those alone, your piece will come together really well. And if you get overwhelmed by it, turn your painting upside down or sideways. Attack it from a different point of view. when you do that it just gives you a different perspective on your painting and you might catch what you missed or couldn't figure out what was wrong you'll be able to discover it when you're looking at it upside down or take a picture of it And again, these will more come together once I put the little centers in. And if you find that your flowers are going to be your specialty of what you want to do, just keep painting them. You'll get to know them, especially if there's one particular one you want to paint over and over. The more you paint that one particular flower, one, you're going to see a vast improvement. Two, you're going to get so familiar with the flower that you'll be able to draw it in your sleep or paint it whatever format you want to use just have fun 
fun with it, enjoy what you're doing. If it's to be a hobby, then make sure you paint those things that you enjoy painting. If it's something that you want to make a living out of, again, make sure it's something that you want to do. The minute you find you don't want to do it or it's too much like a job, then it's time to walk away. So I'm just going in here and there and adding a little bit of this red that I'm seeing on some of the petals. Kind of just giving it a little bit of a wash, which all it's doing is it's creating a little bit more interest. And it's not everywhere, it's just here and there that I noticed that it picked up. And it could be something that's next to it that's casting a red glow on it. So the next thing is the centerpieces, which I'm just going to go in and start off by putting straight white. Trying to see where all my little the little ones are. Some of them are in strange positions. They're gonna make sure that they don't look torn. But I've noticed this has a lot of um, the flowers are all bending and turning in different directions. These are just kind of thin lines for the those little center pieces. And then what I'm trying to do is use my colors I already have. Without adding more color. Because it's actually like a four counting white. using four colors on this one and then black for the background.
and nothing major to them. They're pretty simple. Little, um, little pieces in here. They're just kind of almost like a little pop of color. That, um, against the blue. And again, I want, you know, I'm going for realism, but I'm also keeping them pretty simple. I tell you that this is too thick, so I'm going back in with just a water brush, thinning it up. All right, so there we have it. Now the only thing I have, like I said, I'm going to do is come back in and I'm going to put my bumblebee in here. Um, you can, if you want, add a little bit more details and highlights. You can make this go as far as you want it to go. Um, if you want it to be more realistic than what I've done go for it I kind of um, this started off to be just something to keep myself busy when I had some downtime when I was went home I just wanted something to distract my um, what was going on there this was a good distraction for me to just sit and paint wasn't at the time wasn't sure where I was taking it now granted down the road I can easily come back and um, add more to this um, but this is basically kind of what I was going for so each paint each painting you do each piece that you do It's yours to create and design how you want it to look. So there you have it. Only thing left for me to do is put my bumblebee on it, like I said, sign off on it. And this one is done. So I hope you do like um, the finished piece. I hope to see your finished piece. Um, again, this was my um, Larkspur. Yeah, my Larkspur uh, July flower. It's on a canvas board that was painted black and then I just painted in with um, white to knock it out and then went back in with my blues, some um, and a little bit of red and of course white to finish this I will be topping it off by putting a bumblebee on it but I do hope that you like the end process here I hope to see yours and I do look forward to the next time we meet um, subscribe give me a thumbs up uh, again thank you uh, for joining me on this beautiful day you guys take care until next time have a good one